Hey everyone, welcome to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're going to be adding an email service to our blog application so that people can sign up for a newsletter and then we can send out mass emails to everyone that's subscribed. Yeah, there are tons of email services, but we're gonna be using SendGrid because it has the best documentation. And to do this, we're gonna be using Firebase Cloud Functions, which we went over in our previous video. So if you want to uh, check that out, uh, you can look right here and click on this link right here. Hit it, hit it. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump straight into creating our SendGrid account. We're here on the SendGrid website and we just have to try it for free because we're cheap. We yeah. like things that are free. Once this loads up, we'll add our email. Yeah, and while he's doing that, you might notice on the side that we're signing up for two things at once. Uh, both of these are free and you do want both of them. The marketing campaigns give you a lot of cool features that you can use like automations and sending single emails, contact lists, stuff like that. While the email API lets you send emails from your JavaScript backend, which is what we're gonna be doing today. So just go ahead and fill out this form. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and skip past this. Now that we have an account set up, we're going to verify our domain ownership by setting up some DNS records in our DNS manager. Um, so if you get to this screen, all you have to do is hit settings on the left and then sender authentication. And we're going to be choosing domain authentication. Um, so we're just gonna hit get started and walk through this with you. Our DNS host is going to be uh, Google Cloud. And then we do want to brand this link for a domain. And so what this is gonna do is it's going to change the from in your email. It's gonna change it from saying sendgrid.net to it's your domain. So we're gonna hit next. And then we're going to say, small batch devs and you're going to enter your domain here uh, the advanced settings we're just going to leave automated security on for now and then it's going to give us these five cname records that we need to add to our dns configuration so we're going to switch over to google domains here all right so in our custom resource section we're going to add these five cname records so one thing that you do need to note here is this is not the entire thing that you should be copying. I'm pretty sure you just need to copy this first part. The smallbatchdevs.com should be auto added by Google Domain Manager over here. If that doesn't work for you, try and play around with the values that you're entering because this is a pretty tricky section and it takes a while to validate. Uh, it could take up to 24 to 48 hours to get this propagated through the internet. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and enter these in. Now that we've got these entered, we're just going to scroll down on SendGrid and and we're gonna check the box that says I've added these records and we're gonna hit verify just to see if it propagated that quickly. Uh, majority of time it won't have. All right, it obviously hasn't gone through yet. So we're just gonna keep going. Next, we're going to create an API key for our web application. So over here on the left-hand side, we're on the settings API keys. And we can just go ahead and click the create API key button. So we'll give it a full access. Oh, we need to add a name. We'll just call it web app for now. Create and view. And now we have our web API key. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and save this off somewhere because we're gonna need it a little bit later. Okay, so while we're still in the SendGrid console, we are going to create a template that we can use later on in our code. So we're gonna go over to the left here and under email API, we're gonna click dynamic templates. And we're just gonna create a really basic one for now and then we can go ahead and name it just welcome user, something simple. All right, so we're gonna add a version and then we'll just pick one of the SendGrid, uh, the SendGrid pre-made pre email templates for now just to kind of get through this. We'll save it and there we go. So when we go back and we see this welcome user, we're gonna need to copy this template ID because we're gonna need this in our code later. This is how we'll tell SendGrid, hey, we wanna send this specific email template through our backend Firebase function. And so I'm just gonna copy this off to the left and there we go. Before we move on, we're going to create our first sender and this will allow us to test our sending later on once we integrate into our blog application code. 
Um, this is going to ask you for an address because it is required by law that you put an address at the bottom of all of your emails. And we'll cover this more towards the end of the episode. Um, but for now, we're just gonna fill out this form and create a first sender. The next step is to upgrade our Firebase account from the Spark plan to the Blaze plan. And the reason we have to do this is because the Spark plan does not allow outgoing third-party API calls. So we will need to upgrade our account. And to do that, we're here in the Firebase console. Down here at the bottom, we can just hit this upgrade button. We'll select the Blaze plan, continue. And by doing this, as long as you stay in the free tier limits, you won't be charged Obviously, if you go above those limits, you will be charged, but that, that won't come immediately. Now we're on the Google Cloud platform, and this is where we'll just enter our billing information. Um, so we're gonna do that real quick. Now that we've upgraded our Firebase account to the Blaze plan, while we're in the Firebase console, we're just gonna upgrade our security rules because we're going to be reading and writing to a new Firestore location later in the video when we update our code base. So you can see here we've added the match contacts contacts email path and we're going to allow people to read from that if they're authenticated, but anyone in the world can write to it, which is what we want. We want people to be able to sign up with their emails, write to this Firestore location, but we don't want to allow them to pull that data down and figure out everyone else's email that's signed up. So this is why we've updated our security rules and we're just gonna publish these before we move on to the coding segment. So now we're going to jump into the coding segment of integrating SendGrid with our block application. Uh, the first thing we need to do is just a little cleanup real quick. We're going to rename this Firestore functions directory to email. Let's get that. Yeah. And now that we've done that, the next thing to do is install the SendGrid mail package into our application. So we're going to do that in the functions directory. So we're going to cd into functions and then run npm install dash dash save at SendGrid slash mail. Nice. Very nice. Boom. Now that we've installed the SendGrid mail package, we're going to add our SendGrid API key to our future email function here. So we're just going to make a constant and call it SendGrid API key. And don't worry, we will change this API key later, so don't even try. Um, but seriously, if you are pushing this to a GitHub repo, you don't want this API key to be public because people will be able to use this and send email from your SendGrid account. So make sure you either remove this or that your GitHub repo is private. Now we're going to write our cloud function for actually communicating with SendGrid's API. So we're just gonna copy in our function that we've written already. Basically what's going on here is whenever we create this contacts document we have a trigger here our on create trigger we're gonna grab the data that's being created there and actually use that data to create our welcome email to the send grid specs so we have a to a from our template ID which we'll add in a second and some template data which is just the first name of the contact we'll call the send grid send email function just right here and this will actually go out and call the SendGrid API. Uh, we're setting our API key and then we're actually calling it. So now all we have to do is copy in the template ID, which we have saved off. Yeah, and while he's doing that, uh, if you wanted to send your own custom subject and body without using a template, you can replace the template ID and the dynamic template data properties with a subject and body property, and then you can put custom strings in there. Now the dynamic template data property, this is going to inject data from here into the email template inside SendGrid, and that is gonna be using the handlebars syntax. Uh, it's a separate library, uh, but SendGrid has plenty of documentation on that if you want to take advantage of those features. So we're almost ready to deploy our Firebase function that we just wrote here. Before we do that though, we do need to update our root index.ts file with our new Firebase function that we're exporting here, send email. So in that file, um, we'll just update the on Firestore write since we no longer have that with send email. And same with our export here, send email. 
And just as a side note, in our package.json file, we were running into an issue when deploying our Firebase functions. If you've already deployed once, you'll have this lib directory here. And uh, we were running into an issue where it wasn't updating that lib directory and not redeploying our new Firebase functions. So we'll paste in a new build parameter here that will actually go ahead and remove that lib directory first um, and then actually generate the new Firebase Cloud function and deploy that. Um, so if you run into a similar issue, you may need to adjust your package.json file um, in order to get around that. So now we're actually able to deploy our Firebase functions. So in our terminal, in the root directory of our project, we'll run Firebase deploy dash dash only functions. Here we go. Please work. So far so good. Moment of truth. Boom. First try. First try. <laughs> it's not. It is. It is. Now that our Firebase function has deployed, we're going to get into our actual blog application code. We're going to add an interface for the contacts that we're about to accept through a form. Uh, so we're going to add a top level shared module and do a sub module, a uh, subfolder of model and a interface right here called contact. And we're just gonna paste in the contact interface. All it has is an email and a first name. That's all we're gonna collect for now. The next thing we need to do is update our homepage component with uh, some TypeScript and some HTML and some SCSS so that we have a form to collect the first name and the email of anyone that wants to subscribe to the newsletter. So we'll head over to our homepage component, which is in source here. So in our home page component, we're just going to paste in an additional function here. So what this function is going to do is uh, with the email and the first name that we pass over from the HTML, we're going to call our database set function um, with this contact information. And it will go off and save this data into Firebase for us. Now let's go ahead and add the form code in our HTML. So in our home page component for HTML, we'll just paste in some HTML for that form here. And this is a pretty basic form. We just have an input field for the first name and our email. And then when we click the join button, we'll go ahead and call that add contact to database function that we just added to the TypeScript. Okay, so next we're gonna add some new styles to our SCSS to kind of make this newsletter input form a little bit nicer. So we're just gonna paste in some new code here. And all we've done is we've taken this read button class out of the preview grid so that we can use it in our newsletter form. And we've also added this newsletter div that just centers everything nicely, puts some padding, and changes the background color a little bit so it's a little noticeable on the page. And the last thing we need to do is add this set function to our database service. So if we go ahead and navigate there, we're just gonna paste this in right at the top. It's just a generic set function that can be used for any path. And so it takes in an object and a path, and all it does is write that object to that path in Firebase. Now it's finally time to test the work that we did today. So in our terminal, we'll run ng serve dash dash port and we'll run it on port 3000. And then we'll be able to actually open up our app and test the functionality. So in our local deployment of our blog application, we'll enter a name and our email. And the first name here is going to try to send it through that dynamic template data, but the template we chose in SendGrid isn't gonna actually use that first name. So right now it's kind of irrelevant, but this is how you would do it. So we went ahead and took a screenshot of the email that we received from SendGrid and just have a visual here and it, it looks good. It looks like it was sent from our small batch devs at Gmail email. So any user would receive this email in their inbox. Yeah, and whenever you finish the domain verification or the single sender verification, this via sendgrid.net will go away. That's what that step does whenever you verify your domain. So something we wanna mention before the end of the video, and this is by all means not legal advice and you should consult a lawyer, 
But when sending email from a business account or for business purposes, you have to comply with the Can Spam Act. And you wanna tell them a little bit about it? Yeah, so basically the Can Spam Act requires you to have a physical address in your emails in order to send out these mass emails to anyone that subscribes to your newsletters. Yeah, you also need to have an unsubscribe link and if a user hits your unsubscribe link, you have 10 days to take them off of whatever list they're unsubscribing from. Uh, you also need to get permission from the user before you can send emails to them. Here on our app, we have this join our newsletter, which is an opt-in for email receiving for that user. So that's gonna cover that base for us. But remember, consult a lawyer. Yeah, so you don't get sued. Don't get sued. For millions. Be smart. Or billions. Trillions. Gazillions. I don't know what's higher than that. <laughs> Here we go. I'll row. <laughs> Either row. So. Just be like, we created a SendGrid account, set up an email template, set up a cloud function, and added a form to our newsletter, uh, added a form to our blog. Wait, so it's created a SendGrid email account. So did it. Configured, create created a SendGrid account, configured the DNS, created a Firebase function and added a form to our blog. Okay. Right? Is that it? Yeah, more or less. More or less. You watched the episode. Wait, if you made it this far, you've watched the episode. The yes, definitely. Good point. Yeah, dude. Shwip.